Welcome into Sports Extra, everybody. I'm Maria Martin. It is November. It's chilly, and we love the fall colors. We also love our football, but before we get into any of that, tonight I have a very special co-host. I've been telling you guys about this on Twitter for this edition of Sports Extra. I'll give you a couple hints. The Braves win the World Series. He was a big part of that team winning, but was not on the field for the post-game celebration. So who could it be? Well, he's responsible for both the NLCS MVP and the World Series MVP being in a Braves uniform. So if you guessed Alex Anthopoulos, you would be correct. The general manager of the Atlanta Braves is here. We do not have the trophy, which we're a little sad about, but that, that's okay. Welcome to the studio. Glad to be here. I've never been here before. And um, I remember when uh, two years ago, yeah. uh, you mentioned to me about coming on the show and I quickly said, ah, if we win the World Series, I'll come on the show. So I got to tell you, I didn't necessarily think I'd be here today, <laughs> but I'm really glad I am. You didn't necessarily think that they would win a World Series, but I don't think anybody did, right? This is a nice surprise. Yeah, really nice surprise. I mean, we, you know, the goal each year is to get to the playoffs. Sure. Once you get in, you don't know what's what's going to happen. Um, but, you know, the most rewarding part about all this is people, like we were at the stadium today talking to of fans and so on and people just love the team right obviously the fact that we're winning is great but th all the guys the characters everything else and even I've joked with Snit I'm like Snit when you when you look back at your career you've had guys with pearls umbrellas <laughs> panda hats exactly the way he thought it was going to play out but I think Atlanta and the fan base just fell in love with this team and it's great you know it's been 12 days since we were in Houston and it doesn't feel that way obviously you were not there we'll get into that in a little bit but what have these last 12 days been like since the World Series championship was crowned for Atlanta I mean, it's been great. Um, you get a ton of texts and emails and things like that. Uh, people on our street have been incredible. Um, they put all where kinds of live? stuff on our house. Yeah, where we live, yeah. They put all kinds of stuff on our house oh, and cards awesome. and billboards, and it's been amazing. Um, we were quarantined for a good chunk of that, so we didn't have a chance to really get out. So I was more of excited for my kids to get back to school. And then once I was cleared, I had to go to GM meetings in San Diego and see our peers and try to work on 2022. But, um, you know, getting a chance to go to some of the events, Hawks, Falcons, and so on. And I think, you know, I'm going to try to enjoy this offseason because you don't get too many offseasons where you get, you get to win a World Series and enjoy it with the fans. Yeah, obviously, I know you. You're obviously thinking ahead to 2022. Yeah. As, so, as soon as you host that trophy, you're like, okay, now we got to move to the future. But you have to enjoy the parade a little bit, right? That was incredible. You and your family oh, were man. on a truck. What was it like? Yeah, you know, I was telling people, people even in sports and baseball, that, you know, you talk about winning the World Series, and I've asked the people that were on, on the field celebrating and uh, were at the parade, and I'm like, what, what was better? Yeah. So I didn't get to do one of them. And they all said the parade by far. Wow. And you don't know what to expect. Like, I have never been to the Fox Theater, right? Like, my family <laughs> has, but I never had a chance to. But just, like, going by the Fox Theater, and there's so many people, and the passion, and they're yelling. And even you make an eye contact with some people, and just the love that you're getting, the appreciation. Um, and it's awesome for your family to see that, too. You know, we're new to Atlanta and see everybody else, what it means to them, and so on. So um, I love the fact, being an Atlanta sports fan and so on, that we are a city, we, we've won a title now. We've won a World Series. No one can talk about bad sports town and that kind of thing. And also the fact that everyone got to see the battery and the ballpark and oh, the yeah. fan base and the excitement. And the people on Fox, they talked about it as well, how exciting it was. So. Um, I think it's just great. It's great for the community, and now hopefully we could try to get this thing done again. Look, I know you don't want to really compare the two parts of the parade, but part of it was in downtown Atlanta. Then you right. move it to the Battery and Cobb County. Which one was better? You know, it was <laughs> just all of it was good, and that's yeah. not being politically correct. It was just good the whole way. When we got close to the ballpark, it got pretty intense, right? The fans are on, on top of you. So, but we start out in the city, and I'm just more blown away of there's so many people and we traveled so far and you're thinking they've been out there for hours and oh, hours yeah. and they have signs. Since like yelling. six o'clock in the morning, by the way. It's unbelievable. And we have families that we know and so on. And I've never been part of a parade or been to a parade or anything like that at all. But that's what it's about, right? I mean, seeing everybody come together, you know, we're divided on so many things in this world. Like to have everybody come together to celebrate the Braves and celebrate the city and the community. It's a great feeling. Has it sunk in yet? You know, not entirely still. Like, I still, um, I'm really proud of it, obviously. I'm proud of it forever. Um, but I, I still, there's times I'm still like, wow, I can't believe we won the World Series. Like, we, I, we, have we have, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have all kinds of things at home. And we went to the stadium with my family to take photos with the trophy because we, we weren't there. And um, I'm just, you know, I, I, you know, from my standpoint, career-wise, like, I'll always have that now, no matter what happens, right? You still sure. have success and so on. And the city will always have that as well. Um, I'm just incredibly I'm incredibly proud of that and you know, no matter what you know hopefully I'm here for 20 years but I'm always going to be tied to this place and I'm always going to be tied to Atlanta and I'm proud of that and the fact that the Braves are the only other team to win World Series um, you know and bring this you know bring Atlanta 
uh, a championship. Um, it's just awesome. Your first as a general manager, which yeah. obviously is incredible for you. Uh, you keep talking about the fact that you weren't in Houston. For those of you that have lived under a rock, I guess, yeah. you tested positive for COVID. I think it was before game four, is that yes. right? Yes, yep. Uh, what was going through your head whenever you get that positive test back? I thought it was like a joke. I thought our trainer <laughs> was just kidding with me. So yeah. I um, I was in on Saturday morning, and I would test periodically just to want to make sure that our players are safe, sure. our kids are in activity school. So I tested Saturday morning, just I didn't really have anything, and then he said, you tested positive. I'm like, no way. And I thought he was kidding, and I kept asking him. And this him, is like, game four of the World Series, by Yes, the way. like Saturday morning, game four is that night, and I just couldn't believe it. So once we did, like, two or three of them, uh, I called my family. They did a test. They were all, all fine. Uh, but I immediately went home. I called Snit. I didn't want it to get out. I didn't want any chance that it would impact our players' mentality going into the game. Sure. It was kept really quiet. So Terry McGurk, the chairman of the team, we obviously told, told the league, and Snit were the only ones that, that knew. We go out, we win game four, so it's awesome. So now Sunday, we have a, that could be the game that we clinch. We know there's going to be a trophy presentation if we win. Um, they're talking to me about what I can and can't do. Maybe I do an interview for my office. Um, do the players office. know? At players all. don't know. Nobody knows. Wow. But, you know, I'm getting worried that eventually people are going to realize I'm not around because I've been sure. around daily. Yeah. When you're at home, you can kind of get away with it because everyone's around. On the road, it's a smaller group, right? It's just the Braves people in Houston. So I knew if we got to the road, it might get out. Um, but for the most part, everyone did a really good job. They kept things quiet. And I think if it had gone past game six, I think by game seven, the word would have been out. But <laughs> yeah. I just didn't want to take any chance that our team would be impacted. Someone would worry. Someone's family would worry. Um, you know, we have so much at stake, so much on the line. And even after we won, I didn't want there to be some type of big announcement about I had COVID and so on. I didn't right. want to take away from the moment from the manager, the coaches, the players. You know, my story was going to be after the fact. Like, there, that was their moment. Just because I couldn't be there, I didn't want to ruin that moment for them and me be the topic and so on. So I knew by the time everyone put two and two together, at least everyone who was there got to enjoy it the way they, sh they should. You obviously enjoyed it very differently. Yeah. Because it was in the living room of the Anthopolis home. Yeah. Take me inside that moment. What was it like with your kids and your wife? Yeah, I mean, we, once we got up six runs, I felt pretty confident we were going to win. So Did our daughter you watch the whole time? Uh, yeah, I watched the beginning I had a hard time with. So I didn't want to watch the start of the game, I'll be honest with you. I told my wife, I'm like, I think I got to go for a drive. Oh I just was gosh. so stressed. Just because, you know, you lose game five. Sure. Should you lose game six? Now we get the Dodgers 3-1, oh, Atlanta yeah. curse, game seven, <laughs> momentum. Just like, man, I, I can't even, you know, conceive having that. So Got to go, got to go. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm starting that my, my wife talked me out of going for a drive. I start watching first and second, nobody out. I'm like, oh, Lord. <laughs> And uh, I changed the channel, the M NBA was on. Okay. Just to try to switch through, I had my phone just with the app. We obviously got through it, Max looked great. Um, when Solaire hit the home run, I watched, our kids were in bed, I, I yelled and screamed. So our daughter, our 11 year old daughter, Julia, she, she woke, woke up and came down the stairs. So my wife said, why don't we just allow her to stay up? They had school the next day. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and then by the ninth inning or the bottom of the eighth, um, we said, why don't we get our nine-year-old son up so he could see it? You know, it's a big moment for Atlanta, for the community. So we sat there. Um, we had told them years ago if we won the World Series, they'd be able to sp spray Sprite all over the place. <laughs> so in the ninth inning, they're saying, can we pull out the Sprite? And we're like, no way. So it, it was great. We counted down. Our phone's blowing up. We were just cheering, excited. And I don't remember it till the day I die. I mean, it's just it's an amazing feeling. And uh, hopefully the fans will as well. No Sprite, but any hair chalk in the Anthopolis home? No, we did, you know, they, had, they were into the, the pearls and they had everything yeah. going. And my wife does a really good job with that kind of stuff. She gets them all geared up. And I got to tell you, if it's a close, stressful game, I won't even watch with them. Um, I'll just go to my office and I'll watch in my office. And it's, I know it's weird and odd. And I just, as I've gotten older, gotta be it's getting yourself. harder. Yeah, okay. and, and I'm not, you know, I just, you know, they're asking me, my kids are asking me questions and so on, and I'm, I'm not there, you know, so yeah. I don't want to ruin the experience for them. Like, if it's, if it's game one or we're up 10 or we're down 10, I'm fine, but it's a one-run game, a two-run game, it's a pretty important game. I'd rather just be alone. Let's talk about those trade deadline acquisitions because obviously across the country, people are saying that this is possibly the best that a general manager has ever done. You get four guys that completely change your outfield, change the makeup and the heartbeat of this team. Were you even surprised a little bit by what they were able to accomplish? You know, a guy like Adam Duvall was, was playing well. So he played even, you know, he was even a stronger performer after we, we got him. So Lair, there was a lot of in indicators. He was getting hot in July. I think he had six home runs in, in that month alone when we yeah. acquired him. And he had been a really good player. So we thought there was pretty good up, upside to him. A guy like a Rosario had been a good player, had just started to get going, he had gotten hurt. So we weren't surprised that these guys were going to perform well. I think if you're going to say a surprise, 
you know, what I've said, Soler is going to win a World Series MVP or Rosario is going to win, you know, the NLCS MVP. No. And I'd say this, even if there was an MVP for the NLDS, I think Jock would have, would have won it. Um, the, the home runs he hit were huge. Yeah. So uh, these guys are all really established, talented players. Sure. They were either hurt, they were having down years, but there were signs that they should be good again. And look, we needed more than one. We needed all of them. And even though we were worried about playing time, it worked out. Soler got, got co co over at one point. Rosario and Jock played. Sure. Um, then when Soler came back, but just having that depth when guys were hurt and they weren't available, it was huge for us. Because if you look back at previous years, we lost Adam Duvall in the NLCS in 2020. Yep. We'd always lost guys at the end of 2018, 2019. Guys were getting hurt. So I think the one thing I learned is that even though you worry about putting Snit in a tough spot with playing time and so on, you're much better off having more than less because something invariably will happen to your club. Listen, and that's an indicator of a good GM, by the way. He said that he's talking about seeing different things in these guys that maybe had some down moments. So I think that's incredible what they were able to accomplish. And kudos to you, obviously. Mm -hmm. Another big one, Freddie Freeman. I think people tweet about Fred Freddie Freeman every second of the day now, especially at me. What's it going to take to keep him here, Alex? Uh, yeah, I mean, I just, I obviously, I get asked about all the time. I'm, sure. not, I'm not out a bunch, um, but when I am out, <laughs> I feel it. Because, you know, I look rightfully so, right? He's an unbelievable player. He's the best player on the team. He means a ton of the city. The city means a ton to him. Yeah. So he's not under contract. If I'm a fan, I'm asking the same same thing, right? And I, I get the worry. I get the concern. I know I've kind of said the same thing over and over yep. again. Um, so to try to change up my answer a bit, um, the goal is the same. Obviously, we want to sign him. Um, obviously he isn't signed today and I know that's I'm gonna continue to get asked until the day he's signed all I would say is that as long as it gets done uh, that's all that matters whether that's today tomorrow a month from now two months from now as long as when we get to opening day he's he's the guy at first base and he's here long term I think everyone's gonna be happy him included as well you know that being said you get to free agency you go through the process and so on you don't know how all that stuff's gonna, gonna go but he's come out and said it himself what this city means to him he wants to be here he's as sincere as they come we've said the same thing you know, you would think it'd just be snap your fingers. Hey, he wants to be here. We want him <laughs> right. here. Why isn't it done, right? Doesn't work it, that way. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work that way. In sports and negotiations, these are obviously big deals. Um, obviously, I can't be completely transparent about the whole thing because sure. I understand just sign the guy. You should get it done. Um, but like anything, I've done a, a ton of deals as a GM. This is my, my 10th year. Um, some get done quick. Some get take a while. But eventually, when both sides want it to happen, that's normally a good sign. But beyond that, that's probably that's as optimistic as I could be that it's a good sign because it isn't done yet. So um, all I can tell everybody is that we really want him. He fits the team so well in so many ways. And uh, we're going to be optimistic and work towards getting a deal done. Can you give me a confidence level in him being in a Braves uniform in 2022? Yeah, I got asked that today. A fan <laughs> asked me, give me a percentage. <laughs> give me the percentage of Freddie Freeman is going to be here. And it's so hard to put a percentage on it, right? So um, that's not to dodge the question. It's just impossible to know. Um, I'm always going to be optimistic. You know, it's one thing when a player doesn't want to be here and you have, sure. to, you have to do more and try to really pull him away from somewhere. Or you don't really want a player, obviously, that, that speaks for itself. He wants to be here. He sincerely, truly wants to be here. And at the same time, he's earned the right as an elite player, one of the best players in the game, to have this, to have this process and get the contract that, he, that, he, that he's worth. So we're always going to balance putting a team together, all those ki kind of things. So um, to put a number on it, the chances and so on, hard to say. I mean, look, we would have loved to have Adam signed at any time, and I think he said the same thing. He wanted it done too. Um, all I can go back to the fact is that as long as he wants to stay and we want him to stay, I like our chances to get it done at some point. I just don't know when. I'm going to sneak in one final question with you, sure. a fun one, uh, because the commissioner's trophy doesn't exactly look like the Stanley Cup. You're, you're yeah. a Canadian I thought guy. of Stanley Cup, too, when, when I had it, when I held it. I thought about it because it's interesting. Like, you're the first person that's brought it up. Right? Oh, I've never held a trophy before, but growing up in Canada, I've seen the Stanley Cup, and they will skate around Babies, the ice, and they get, 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 give it a kiss, and yeah. they drink out of it. <laughs> and I'm like, it's not really set up. You can't really no. drink out of it. You can't. I don't know, especially in today's world with COVID, you want to give it a kiss. <laughs> right. You want to do It's a little sharp, corners. <laughs> so uh, I thought the same thing. Like, what do you do with this, right? So do you hold it up? Do you hug so it? what'd you do? So we took a bunch of photos. You know, I saw some photos online of guys that, like, they had it on their lap. They, they had a hug, and <laughs> that's kind of how we did it. We, we took our family photos, and we had it, and we wanted to have it in there. So um, it's really, it's huge. It's, um, it's pretty unique. I mean, when I went to game one, did an interview with Fox. You know, they were interviewing players in front office. Yeah. And they had the trophy there, and they said people were taking photos, like players 
photos with it and pick and I didn't want to see it I didn't want to you know, I felt like <laughs> if I want to put my hands on I want to earn it right? right 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 so I like that it was really cool to finally see and I'm I've debated do I bring it back to Canada um, to show my family as well, but I'm proud of it, right? And I, <laughs> I've, I've showed it to friends and family and so on. So, and I know fans got a chance to take a take a, a shot with it today too. Just no putting any babies in it because it's no, sharp no, and I don't. I mean, they have to be really small, <laughs> really, really small. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. Thank I really much. appreciate you being here and um, following up on that bet that you made me about two years yes. ago.